Hey, fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today I have 10 test taking strategies, otherwise known as hacks, that'll work on any standardized math exam. This is ex examples from the ASVAB, but these test taking strategies or hacks will work on any standardized multiple choice exam where there is no calculator and you have choices to pick from. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. What I'd highly recommend you do is have a notebook out and a pencil, pause the video, do the problem before I do it, unpause the video, watch how I do it with a hack. Just like juggling, the only way you learn how to juggle is practice. The only way you get good at math tests is you gotta practice, so practice a lot. With that said, let's start with hack number one, estimating and rounding. So you have multiple choice answers, so rounding is a good technique to go. So if the problem where a car travels 47 miles per hour, how long will it take to go 230 miles? I could round both these numbers up. I could round this up to 50, and this up to 250, and then I know that 250 divided by 50, my zeros drop out, 25 divided by five is five. I know that's not the right answer, but the closest one to five will be the right answer, and there's really a lot of distance between all of those, 4.9 is the closest one, therefore the correct answer. The correct way to do it is to do 230 divided by 47, that long division. That's gonna take a lot of time for you to do it. It is deliberately written so that you can approximate. All right, let's move on to hack number two. Using the answers to work backwards. So you have these multiple choice problems. Um, you wanna use these answers to go backwards. So hack number two is, rather than solve this whole equation, just take the value and plug it in and see if it works. Take that three, plug it in there, three times three is nine, nine minus five is not 10. 12 minus five is not 10. 15 minus five is 10, this one works. Correct answer, answer C right there. So use those answers. It might not always be the best solution, um, but it is a really good hack to know. It'll save you a lot of time, especially in these no calculator exams. If, there, if it's really hard and super long division, you're probably missing the point of the problem. All right, let's move forward to hack number three. So number three, unit analysis shortcut. Okay, so for a rate proportions problem, show how to check the units. This is a really important idea. The units are gonna work in your equation as well. So a worker can produce 15 units in three hours. Three hours. I could do 15 divided by three to get five units, units, per hour, how much can he produce in eight hours? If I multiply this by eight hours, I can see my hours cancel. Only units I have left are units, as are all of my units here. So five times eight gives me 40 units. So how do I know to multiply or divide by hours? I know hours have to go in the numerator so they could cancel with the denominator right there. Okay, hack number four. Let's scroll down here to hack number four. The percentage shift, decimals, percents, fractions, going back and forth between them is really important. Understanding that 20% is just two 10% is really an important idea. So our hack number four is 30% of 75 is a pretty long multiplication problem, but let me just go ahead and take 10% of 75, I just put a dot right there, right? 10% means move it over once. So 10% of 75 is 7.5. 20% would be twice that, 15. 30% would be that 15 plus 7.5 or 22.5. I did that a little too quick. What I'm saying is I, 30 times 75 is gonna be pretty tricky. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take 10% of 75. That moves the decimal place over once to give me 7.5. There's 10%. There's another 10%. There's another 10%. So I have 10% plus 10% plus 10%. First off, I can see these add up to 15, carry the 1, 21 plus 1, 22.5. So rather than multiply it all out, know that 30% is made up of three 10%. Right, hack number five here, the common fraction of decimal conversions. And these might seem a little hard, but you know that a quarter in your pocket is 25 cents. So you know a quarter and 0.25. A half dollar piece is 50 cents. So a half is 50 cents. So which of the following is the largest value? Well, I can't really compare those until they're in the same units. So I'm going to convert everything to decimals. I have 0.4. One half. Well, one half is 0.5. 30% goes over 1, 2.3. 3 eighths, well, 4 eighths is a half. 3 eighths is less than a half. So I'm looking for the largest value. I don't have to calculate that one out because I know that 4 eighths is a half. 3 eighths is less than it. So the largest one has to be answer B right there. OK, if you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. If all of this is a big mess, I have a Foundations of Math course, and I also have a math book out uh, with 25 supporting videos and that'll take you through all of the math you have to know. I deliberately made it 25 chapters, 25 videos, one chapter a day for a month and that's to kind of fill in some of the holes in your math. So that's a great way to actually just learn the math. Um, but these are just some tricks you should know. Hack number six, the Pythagorean triples. So the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That only works in a right triangle, but there are a couple of triangles that, that you should know. One is 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. 9 plus 16 equals 25. But every um, ratio of those as well, if I multiply this by 3, 9, if I multiply this by 3, and this by 3 will work as well, 9, 12, 15. So they're asking you to do this problem. A ladder is 13 feet long. It's placed against a wall so that the base of the ladder is 5 from the wall. How high up the wall does the ladder reach? So these are the dimensions. Another one of these Pythagorean triples, besides 3, 4, 5, is the 5, 12, 13. A lot of the times, they're going to use these triples because it's a time test. And you got to kind of know those tricks to do it in time. So correct answer, answer C, 12. OK, hack number seven, the no algebra method. Show how to solve certain word problems by just thinking logically. Um, so just kind of think this one through, try and draw a picture out. I have 15 cows and chickens. There are 42 legs. Well, I don't know. Let me just pick a number like 10. If I had 10 chickens, that means I would have five cows. 10 times 2 would be 20. 5 times 4 would be 20. So I picked 10 chickens. I'm not going to add up to 42. So that means I need one more cow. So let's try six cows. Six cows, nine chickens. Six times 4, 24. 9 times 2, 18. Add it together, it give me the 42 legs. It's important. How many chickens are there? Well, we said there are um, 9 chickens. Correct answer, answer C right there. A lot of these you could just kind of reason out by drawing pictures and working on them. OK, hack number 8. Simplify before you solve. So I have this equation right here. Well, 2x minus 6x plus 4x. Well, 2x and 4x is 6x. 6x minus 6x. Those all cancel. Then here I could reduce. So I want to reduce before I solve. 2 goes into here once, into here three times. x goes into here once, into here once, leaving me as 3x plus 4x. 
or a total of 7x? Correct answer, answer A right there. All right, just a couple more to go here. Hack number nine, the exponent and root rule. Remember here that a square root undoes a square. So if I have the square root of x squared, the square root undoes that square. Well, that's exactly what I have here. I have the square root, 16 is 4 squared x squared. That square root undoes that and that, leaving me with 4x. Correct answer, answer A. Last hack. Hopefully these are helpful. Again, these aren't the only way to solve them. They are just ways to look at them. Uh, remember, these choices, these multiple choices are your friends. So you could set this up in the quadratic formula, set it equal to zero, factor it, solve, or you just take those values and plug them in. Negative 4 squared is 16 plus negative 8 is 8. First one actually worked. So the correct answer is answer A right there. Um, I'll try negative 2 to show you it won't work. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 4 is not 8. That one does not work. So the only one that works is negative 4. It's a multiple choice test. Use those answers to your advantage. The more you practice, the more practice tests you do, the better you get at seeing these hacks and saving some time. So on the trickier problems that you, you can't quite remember, you could spend more time on those. Any questions at all, please post them in the comment. I really appreciate your support. If you need more math help than just a few hacks, really think about going to my Math Test Success course, getting the book and doing the math, learning the math. Uh, you'll be better off for it. So keep practicing. You'll do great if you keep, to, if you keep practicing. Thank you.